Hey guys, just wanted to give a quick garden update. Today is Mother's Day. I just wanted to go through a little bit of things that I got going on in the garden. First here we have the um, sweet corn. This year I tried a uh, SH2. I think it's a sugar enhanced uh, two corn. About the sweetest you can get I suppose. The variety is called a extra tender. Extra tender 2171. I got it from um, Johnny Select Seeds. I had a bunch of troubles with it at first. It didn't didn't really seem like it wanted to work all that well. The but looking it's looking all right now. It came through and I picked all the suckers off of all of them. But as you can tell, I can I've lost a few here and there. It seems like. I let the uh, bugs get a hold of the seedlings when they were young. I needed to come out here with some kind of spray to get rid of, uh, I think cutworms got into them. And uh, when I dug up some of these ones that are, um, you know, bare spots here, I found there was little worms inside of them. So I think some cutworms got a hold of them. I'm trying to be as organic as I can in this corn, but it's quite difficult. Uh, to keep the bugs out of here So far I've only used neem oil and pyrethrins And I might have used uh, at first some um, Bayer vegetable garden spray I'm trying to get the bugs out of here and It seemed to have worked It's all looking well. We haven't started a uh, shooting up any stalk yet for um, Usually you start seeing a little um, stalk coming out of the middle of the corn tassels. I haven't seen anything like that yet. So far, so good. I've put down quite a bit of hay down here, as you can see, is just to try to help with weeds, keep moisture in. And uh, I did that after I healed healed up the uh, basically put a little bit of dirt around the stalks of the corn to help keep it uh, stabilized during the wind. It's a lot cheaper. I was trying to look for a cheaper method of mulching. And so far, I've only used two bales of hay at $8 a bale, which would, uh, if I actually tried to buy bagged mulch or something, that would have been probably a good two bags per row here. Each row here is about 20 feet. So if I went through, it have been quite a bit more to buy mulch. So the hay seems to be working all right. We'll see as the season goes on. At underneath the hay, you can kind of barely see down in there, there's a soaker hoses. I'm using soaker hoses to water everything. It's probably my last year using soaker hoses as they only last me a year before I had to start fixing them. I was kind of shocked. They're 75 foot hoses. Depending on where you get them, it's between 15 and $20. Not exactly cheap to have to fix them and replace them every year or two so I'm going to try to do a PVC watering system this coming year that would uh, hopefully eliminate the need to buy new stuff it was only bought all the materials already about two hundred dollars no excuse me a hundred dollars for which is basically here I'm going to be making two hundred foot a row so now let me let me go ahead and show you the uh, melons I have some sugar baby watermelons as you can see behind there is actually some onions I pulled up I'll we'll talk about those here in a little bit these melons they don't they're not seeming to take off quite as much as cantaloupe which I'll show you here in a second I hope they start taking off and giving us their uh, um, some good watermelons they're actually a uh, from what the description says they're small not very large melons, also small vine, so maybe that's why these are small. But the uh, each plant, I have four plants right in here. Each one of these posts I put up here to help indicate where the plant is. If I go and fertilize later with some liquid, liquid uh, fertilizer, I'll know where the plant is. And again, I hope this hay actually suppresses weeds because last time, last year, I grew cantaloupe. I had weeds coming up everywhere. And I tried to use wood mulch. That did not seem to help either. 
I don't know if mulch is full of weed seeds, but so far we're looking good here. I'll make, try to make sure that I pull up any weeds that try to come up through this uh, hay, because it actually does. I mean, I don't think there's any surefire cure for weeds, uh, but it, they're easier to pull up when you have the hay. So hopefully I just kind of make sure that they're pulled up before they get too large. Now for the cantaloupe here, it's much, much, much larger. Um, it's already starting to spread out quite a bit. We got flowers, actually got flowers on both the watermelon and the cantaloupe. These are um, Hale's Best cantaloupe. Again, I have four plants. I guess it's based around two feet, two and a half feet maybe. But that's about equivalent to what, what I've been doing in the past. And the between the uh, the um, melons here and the corn is right around six feet. So they'll have hopefully plenty of room to grow. Anyway, as you can, I'll show you later, you're probably going to see I have different sections, which I'm going to actually try to use these different sections of the garden and actually rotate everything around. So I have at least practice some crop rotation, maybe to help with bugs and such. But this is looking really good so far. Nice and green. There's a little bit of bug damage on them. I also been spraying these with neem and pyrethrins. Both of those are supposedly organic. At least the product says it's garden safe, so maybe that's organic still. I did have some ant problems. So I put down quite a bit of diametaceous earth uh, before I put down this um, hay. That was to help get rid of the, get the ants out of here. Which I can't tell if there's any ants now. I wouldn't walk around. Nothing's bit me so far. So I think we might have them under control. So next is the onions. Which I'm very surprised that I have onions. Uh, first year I've actually had have onions. These particular ones here are the yellow onions. And I'm surprised I have any because early in the season this all flooded. It didn't completely go underwater, but it was all really swampy. And actually right in here is where I planted potatoes. Potatoes were in here. They all rotted out from the rain, so I actually moved those. I'll show you those in a little while. And then this was actually blank here where the melons are. And then right in there in that blank row, that was where I had planted tomatoes earlier. They all froze out, and plus it all really got really wet and muddy so I, they would have died anyway the, we had a really cold several nights which kind of finished them off I tried to protect them that didn't work but surprisingly as you can kind of see as we go along here these are smaller onions down here this is where most of the water was and they kind of get larger as we go up now these are getting ready to be start falling over the yellow onions are falling over will be falling over soon the red ones have already started falling over and I finished them all off and I pushed them over. But we definitely have some fairly decent sized yellow onions. In the past years I've been trying to buy onion sets from Lowe's. The little uh, bulbs. Which from my research that's the wrong size. The wrong type. Um, which are, I think are long day onions. We're actually down here in the south. So I need a short day or maybe intermediate onions. But they didn't ever make anything. So this is the first year I've actually got something that's of quite large size, which is quite cool. I'm kind of go along, and then you'll see I started pushing over the red onions here for maybe a size comparison. This is, I don't know, maybe three inch, three inch diameter, maybe four. Um, I pushed these over the other day to can finish off their maturing process. Most of the red ones have started falling over on their own, so I read that once they started falling over to finish them off is go ahead and push them over. I noticed the yellow ones, their stalks are getting soft, so maybe they'll fall over shortly, and then we'll start preparing for harvest process for those. Now the ones I did pick over here, these were all onions that had uh, flower shoots coming out of them. 
so I wanted to go ahead and pick them out get them dry in a little bit and because they they need to be used first right if they have a flower shoot coming at them they don't store well so we're gonna go ahead and use these first There's quite a bit of them the actual yellow onions have not shot a single flower um, shoot up so I'm thinking the growers I bought them for them from maybe maybe they're just different I don't know why only the red ones did but they did and I bought the actual the actual onion transplants I bought them from the feed store up the road they were real small at first but now we've done pretty well as you might could tell I have three rows I planted them around five to six inches apart it actually worked pretty good it's the first time trying to do this many in one small section I think some people just do one one little row I tried to just do three rows I come out I came out here and watered manually and later on I started using a soaker hose so I set a soaker hose along the side of them and I swapped it back and forth every couple of days to water seems to work pretty well but this year we're excited to actually get some real onions now over to our Roma tomatoes. I probably should have backed up so you can see them. They're going quite nuts. They're pretty large. I planted these originally over there, like I said. They all died, and I had to replant them. So everything in the garden this year is actually about a month late because of the weather. But so far we have fairly good Roma tomatoes. This is the first year I'm using the concrete remesh wire cages previously i've been using the, the small cages that i bought at lowe's those never never could handle tomatoes not even these these are actually supposedly bush varieties but they just seem to keep growing and growing and growing quite high i actually thinking these cages are well worth the investment they're not not particularly that much i would guess somewhere around oh 10 15 dollars a cage i had a local place here that sold the remesh uh about 50 foot rolls i believe it was i think you get it lowe's home depot about 100 150 foot i didn't need 150 foot so i got the these rolls and um i think the cages are about 21 inches in diameter I think it was a 10 10 or 11 squares before I cut and then I rolled it but so far it's pretty good they're very sturdy don't worry about the rust that's all over them because that from I said that these are these cages will last 10 15 20 years I think most people that complain that they don't last long as they say that they bury them they actually take and maybe cut off this bottom section here and um, basically have this long wire going down in the ground well that wire rusts off faster because it's in contact with the ground so I post I uh, secure everything to t-post and I keep these actually out of the ground and as you can see down here we do have some grass growing up through here this is actually a new part of the garden that I added on this year it's been quite a challenge adding on to the garden uh, was try to chop it up as good as i could and um end up with a lot of sod still in there weeds still in there so they still want to keep trying to come up probably next year i won't have as much trouble but as with any tomato cages you want to make sure that you come out here at least every day and make sure the tomatoes are still within the cage if you don't you can see here this has come far out i couldn't do anything with that at one it was probably about two or three days before i came out here and it had shot well past one and i couldn't bend it back inside so you want to make sure you come out here regularly make sure your cages are staying inside your tomatoes are staying inside your cages but We've already got we got flowers everywhere. And you see the little yellow flowers are they're all over the place. These are Roma tomatoes. So they're a little bit smaller. And I actually have some down here growing. 
I don't know, almost every plant here has got some tomatoes on it already and I already uh, deployed the Christmas ornaments to deter birds. Not sure how well it works, but we try it. We use it. I had some left over, so I go ahead and put them out here. Makes everything look pretty. But these tomatoes, they can grow another, I'm going to go another foot, two foot, before they start reaching the top. Now before, I think the old tomato cages were probably as high as this down here, right around here, maybe here. We got plenty of room for them to grow. Right after the tomatoes, we have a row of various peppers. I have bell peppers, sweet banana peppers, and jalapenos, and I'm trying a Trinidad scorpion. Not sure how many peppers of these will eat. I just wanted to try it. This here is the actual Trinidad scorpion here. So far we have flowers. I don't see any peppers forming yet, but I got plenty of flowers in here. Well, actually, I do see one. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, right there next to that white flower right here, that is a pepper. And I'm using, these are the actual tomato cages I used last year. So you can definitely tell height difference. Quite a bit bigger. Uh, it's a cage. And these are very flimsy, but it's fine for a pepper. I might put a stake down. You know, a little uh, stake down here just to keep them up. But that these are plenty sufficient for a pepper. And here's the jalapenos. I came out here and picked some already. Um, you can see a few good ones right in here. Now these are jalapeno M. I don't know what the M stands for. All I know is each each year these jalapenos are hot. Not like a grocery store jalapeno, they're very hot. Uh, maybe it's just a variety, but there's flowers all over these things. You know, the story is on these when I planted them, planted them in late January along with the tomatoes. I transplanted the tomatoes out, they were far too big for my greenhouse, so I had to get them out. It was a bit too early. I knew they probably weren't going to make it, but they were just too big to stay in the greenhouse. These as well were still in there, but they were they're, they're quite a bit slower growing than a tomato. Um, but they got too big for the small greenhouse as well, and the little four-inch plastic pots that I used. So I went and bought some uh, six-inch large uh, peat pots and planted them in there. I don't know. They were considerably tall when I planted them out here and they I don't know I'm gonna guess they're they haven't grown very much height but they've gotten far more healthy when I planted them out here I thought I was gonna lose them all because like you can kind of tell for this one how long that stalk is on the greenhousers one day I guess I let them go without water too long and I lost quite a bit of the leaves well, they've bounced back quite well. With the, I do fertilize with Miracle Grow with the uh, plant uh, tomato food. About every. All right, I lost you on the battery. Memory ran out on my phone here. But uh, I think I was saying I, I, I feed these every two to three weeks with Miracle Grow tomato food. Uh, same with the, everything in the garden pretty much. I either use the tomato food or I use the uh, flowering variety, which is basically higher phosphorus, to get more blooms. But continuing on, uh, these are the, actually the sweet banana peppers. I've been picking these off regularly. Uh, they, they just go crazy. I get plenty of these little peppers. I've mixed them with you know my salsas and everything else. I use it instead of just using bell peppers for everything. I put these in there as well. And uh, basically, I have four after this uh, sweet banana peppers. I have four bell peppers. These are California Wonder variety. They're always slower to set fruit, but I actually do have 
some in there right here I don't know if you can see that on this phone uh, but I do have some bell peppers starting uh, so I have four bell peppers four sweet banana sweet banana peppers four jalapenos and one Trinidad scorpion after the um, peppers I have potatoes as I said earlier I lost all my potatoes to mud and I replanted them they're actually about a month late I think last year I started harvesting them about this time up there these are getting close I starting to get a bit warm around here so they're starting to get a little bad looking so they might be starting to die off soon I know I went in here a little yesterday and noticed that some of the stalks are starting to rot so they're probably going to be getting hit with disease or something or start dying off i felt around a little bit inside there there seems to be some potatoes what i have in here is red potatoes red la soda and uh i had some russet potatoes from the grocery that i went ahead and they had eyes on them so i tried to plant them so i planted them here Let's see if I get any get anything out of them. Probably won't, but that's all right. And I had figured I'd give it a shot. And uh, I haven't fed these in quite some time. Uh, mostly just using the tomato food on them as well. They got a high uh, potassium number, so that's that's good for uh, potatoes. Uh, Beans. I was late, and I was trying to keep these from rotting out again i planted them up a little bit higher than i normally would which i think i'm actually going to do that from now on and not try to make a large trench because if you got building a trench is below ground level it just fills up with water and you don't want that so I've, I've healed these up once normally i would heal them up a couple of times but it seems like once is enough and also put the hay along the sides to hopefully shade out any sun if one of the tubers gets exposed to sunlight. As you can tell, they've kind of taken over this whole entire row. I'm trying to creep in here in between this bean trellis and the potatoes to get to the other side. This one looks all fairly good. It's a 20 foot row. I planted two actual small rows inside there so alternating row probably about eight inches between each seed i put in there i think it was about 50 or so seed potatoes i put in here so hopefully uh, around around six five to six pounds so hopefully i get around 50 to 60 pounds or more out of this i think the rate is about 10 times your seed potatoes is what you get for uh, your actual harvest so we'll see all right next is the beans this is like i said the new part of the garden wanted to get this nitrogen nitrogen out of these beans i'm gonna plant corn here next year but i got a had some leftover that remesh here so i decided i was going to do pole beans this has got a lima beans or uh, butter beans that's where I what I'm hoping to get on butter beans my wife likes butter beans so I got about 10 foot of pole lima beans and 10 foot pole of green blue lake pole beans now if you want to make one of these cages it's actually a fairly decent very sturdy trellis this wire is very sturdy you definitely have to use many T posts uh, but don't I tried to wrestle 20 foot of this cage uh, I recommend maybe 10 foot so I'm gonna be actually cutting this to about 10 foot and trying to get that attached because 20 foot is it's not exactly heavy it's just very awkward especially if you're not very strong this probably is too heavy but it's definitely awkward and definitely have it have it installed before you have any plants if you have any plants and you're trying to wrestle this this material around your plants, you're going to probably wipe out all your plants. 
but these are starting to look good I have they seem to be sending up the uh, tendrils starting to wrap around these cages so hopefully um, start getting some green beans soon now um, when you plant beans I, I planted them I don't know about four inches apart maybe six but I always seem to have some that don't germinate and it's typically in little sections so I come back through here and I put seeds in the holes so that way I have a nice full well, line of beans <clears throat> you can see here I was talking about the soaker hose and these guys here is where it had a leak so I cut the hose and put in this um, quarter inch a little adapter here coupling not all quarter inch size material will work this is actually uh i don't remember the exact name i'll have to look it up again but i had another quarter inch it was too big and i'd install it and probably one or two days later it had done ripped open it was shooting water everywhere so definitely need something small enough that doesn't actually put a lot of strain on that hose or it'll just rip right open again these are all these two rows here are my bush beans i have a um i uh, got uh, black black turtle beans and i have pinto beans and i have kidney beans and I'm trying a, a um vermont cranberry um all these seeds except for the pinto i got from johnny slick seeds about 10 foot 10 foot sections of each one so far everything's looking fairly good i did have some of I, last year i had real bad trouble with beans they kind of come up nicely and they get this strangeness going on here i guess what the maybe that's the first set of true leaves maybe that's the only thing that gets affected actually it looks like i got some more leaves here that are newer that it seem to be affected i'm not sure exactly what it is i battled with it so far it seems to only be this row of mostly the uh, um, kidney beans i did when i planted i put uh um inoculant on the beans and i also used a uh, fungicide when i watered it in originally to try to hopefully not have that problem. And each time I, I come out here and I see a problem, I try to spray with a fungicide, maybe to cure it. it. Seemed to work for a little while, then it comes right back. So hopefully, last year it seemed a lot worse, but as the plants matured, they seemed to bounce back and be just fine. So long as they don't get the um, white mold at the stems, which basically kills the plant. Other than that, they're doing real well. Same with the potatoes. I did a alternating row, so there's actually two rows in each one of these rows. And I got a soaker hose running down the middle. I put all the soaker hose down first, and then I planted the seed. That was an effort to kind of tell where I need to plant before I plant and then try to put a soaker hose and then basically just put a soaker hose on top of seeds that are trying to germinate. But that should be it for now. Um, all is looking well. Of the heat, we haven't had actually any rain. We just got rain the other day. It was um, about a half inch. I think the whole entire month of April, it didn't rain anything. Not an inch. Not a tenth of an inch. Nothing. So, it's kind of difficult, it's kind of weird that I don't have any rain this time of year because here in a few months, it's going to be a lot worse. It's going to be hotter, less rain. It's weird around this area is we can either get no rain or we can get 10 inches of rain. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But uh, hopefully any of this video helps, helps you get some ideas. So far, 
We're doing all right this year. Hopefully your gardens are doing fairly well. Um, until next time, thanks for watching and happy gardening.